So welcome, Tom Hartman, from the Commission for Financial Capability. What's your role there, Tom? Hey, thanks, Darcy. Uh, yeah. Really glad to be, uh, you know, get a chance to be on your podcast. This is thanks this for having is me. Great, yeah, really, really good. So, um, so I've got this uh, this title at CFFC. I'm I'm managing editor there, and um, I'm yeah. thinking that some of your audience may be familiar with Sorted. Totally, and, yeah. And um, you yeah. know, the website, the the tools. That's basically we're the team that puts out Sorted, and got it. Sorted is a brand that uh, is probably one of the examples. of of uh, a government using a, a trusted brand to get out to the public and reach people with uh, yeah. positive data and messages and uh, right. a lot of helpful uh, information. A lot yeah. of the uh, information that we have put up on Sorted is is made for a general audience. Yeah. People and at the beginning it was very much a self serve uh, audience. People who would go on a website and find information for themselves. Yeah. These days um, we do other things like we have programs in the workplace programs. In the community and even in schools, okay. where we're actually interacting with uh, with different cohorts of people. Give me an example of what you guys do in the workplace. Yeah, so um, this this all started where we realized the research was telling us that if you take a cohort of people, and I'm thinking about a dozen people maybe, yeah. or even you know slightly bigger, and put them through um, a, a program all together on financial capability, that they can actually it becomes like a support group where they support each other and help them take tangible steps towards. Um, bettering their finances so as opposed to just telling people stuff yeah and we yeah. know that there's this huge gap between um, knowing the right thing and actually doing the right thing and so an environment like that in the workplace so it started out with um, um, uh, employers like the warehouse okay. but then with like Defense Force and police so it, it started to work and now uh, it's cool we're a whole bunch of workplaces yeah. and so uh, these financial capability programs are uh, that's you cool know, become that because like, there, there are I know that there are some some financial Financial advisors that will do that, or there are some groups, but there's always a um, there's always a sale or a pitch at the end of it, and yeah, you know, like yeah. maybe 80, 90 percent of it is awesome. It's good content that's going to really help people. But I guess where where the point of difference is with something like what Sorted is doing in the yeah. workplace, then that that gives that kind of unbiased. Hey, there's no agenda here. This is just factual information. That's We're going right. to facilitate something. And I guess as soon as you break the ice, people then carry it forward don't they and, they, and then yeah. you begin to change the culture you know that around, is right? definitely one of one of our advantages in being you know taxpayer funded is we are there for for the taxpayer not selling anything yeah yeah and so yeah. that leads to a le level of impartiality and trust um, you, you know, we don't have that hidden agenda. We don't need to pay the bills that way. We pay them a, a other way, Correct. and we're there really as a as a public service. I was talking to somebody um, just this week about this. That you know, because they were asking me, you know, what's what's the motivation for doing this podcast, for example? And, mm. and it's kind of like mm. people sometimes scratch their head when they think, well, what's what's in it for you? And well, there's nothing in it for you. Why why are you doing that? Yeah, that doesn't make sense because you don't normally see people in in the private sector doing things generally um, and genuinely yeah. with no agenda. Yeah. So it's quite weird when it happens. Um, whereas when it's something from the government, it's it's that's kind of what you would expect. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's 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 definitely a public service, but there's a lot of um, you know work from the team that um, you know gets uh, put into the different tools and things. But yeah. it's important to know that CFFC is actually yeah. the office of the retirement commissioner. Okay. And so all this work in financial capability is really about people's long-term well-being. And we know that we can't dial up people's long-term well-being unless you get into the, the short and medium terms as well and have people sort out their finances um, and and okay. start to optimize them uh, uh, better. And then you get them looking towards those long-term numbers. So the ultimate mission then is to, I guess, help help as many Kiwis as possible to get their finances under control so that they can be a little bit more independent in their retirement. That's kind of the ultimate long-term We're, long -term we're after long-term well-being. So yeah. you'll, you'll find that all the different work streams, whether we're in schools or even the work we do with retirement villages, um, yeah. frauds and scams work that I mentioned to you, maybe yeah. we'll talk a little bit more about that. It all is aimed at long-term well-being. Everything we're, we're doing is in function of long-term well-being, but financial capability is much bigger than just the commission. There's a whole bunch of different organizations, okay. whether in the private sector in the public sector who are working on financial capability. Okay. We've got a national strategy. And okay. the vision that. of that national strategy is everyone getting ahead financially. 
Good. So a lot okay. of people might find themselves, you know, as a nonprofit budget advisors, a lot of um, a lot of different people trying to lift people's money skills, yeah. um, possibly for different reasons. But really, the goal is everyone getting ahead financially. It just happens to be that as the office of the retirement commissioner, we're after that long term well being in particular. Got it. Okay. Because everybody, if everybody is made just a little bit more wealthy, mm. or if the well being of New Zealanders increase even just one percent then we, we all benefit no matter where you are in that spectrum, which is quite cool, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, we know also with uh, changing demographics, um, the yeah. way that um, our retirement income framework is set up with NZ Super sort of a, 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 as the floor there, that um, because of demographic change, it's going to become uh, less sustainable or more difficult to fund. Like, for example, right now, NZ Super costs about $38 million a day. You know, that's, uh, that's wow. set to triple, uh, you know, in the, co in the coming years. Yeah. And so how do we get people planning ahead, building wealth ahead of time so that they're able to... Um, not just have to depend on uh, the government pension, but also have savings on top of that, have assets on top of that where they can be more self-sufficient. Got it. Okay. And I'm just going to point out the use of a couple of words and the lack of use of some other words that I've noticed just in the last 10 minutes that I'm hearing you using the word capability, yep. you're using the word wellness. So you're not using yep. the word literacy or wealth. Which is interesting. That's obviously on purpose, well, we right? Do, uh, well, we do use the word wealth, but when we do, we have to like reclaim it from its like 13th or 14th century uh, origins, which is yeah. well-being. Yeah, I mean, that's fundamentally, right. that's yeah. what uh, what what we're after. Yeah. And then we're using capability because we were, um, you know, the Commission for Financial Literacy, but literacy. Um, sort of means that you know how to read and it doesn't actually mean that you might actually be picking up books on a regular basis. You might know how to read and never use that. So capability is a lot more about the skills, the confidence and actually doing, right? So we know that there's this huge gap between um, um, you know, what you know and what you do. Correct. And we're into, um, you know, we're focused on having people leap that and we're, uh, you yeah. know, focused on behavioral change, people doing something different. That's awesome. Money. That's awesome. Because, yeah, otherwise it's just a bunch of information. You can get information anyway. Like, that, welcome to the internet, right? Yeah. Like, it's I mean, not that. It's, it's all at our fingertips, right? Yeah. These days, yeah. But it's about being capable, which, which I think is, is really quite an important distinction to make is that, yeah. like, coming from an, an advisor's perspective, that's really easy because we're sitting in front of people one on one. Yep. And it's like intensive training and teaching. That's, well, they are yeah. with you to do something different, right? If they wanted to do something the same, they wouldn't ever interact with you. They want a different outcome and the best outcome they can. Correct. So they're already in a place where if you tell them, if yeah. you give them advice, hey, you need to do this, that the odds of them doing it. Are great, but yeah. for a lot of people who don't get advice, who don't have access to Which advice, is the majority. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, for most of us, yeah. we need to get to a place where we actually, our money skills go up and that comes from uh, making good decisions, making the most gotcha. uh, optimized decisions we can. Fantastic. So can you tell me, um, like quite often, I'll be talking to people and they might be asking me some questions about, KiwiSaver and when what they should watch out for and how they can get more information, which is, I guess, supplier or product agnostic. And I'll yeah. often refer them to some resources that, that you guys put out. Do you want to just speak to that for a little bit and tell me what's available? Yeah, there? so KiwiSaver is one of those things that I, I um, have been focused a lot on. I mean, this year we've had our three yearly review of retirement income policies. And together with that, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of KiwiSaver recommendations trying to make it work better. And why the focus is because it's one of the main vehicles that we have, one of the main pillars of our retirement income framework, having people prepare for that long-term well-being. Okay, Great. so we've got this focus, right? So one of the one of the things that's been happening in the past few years is the data and disclosure has gotten a lot, a lot better on what we know. Like, uh, um, I can remember not so long ago, the dark ages, right? Yeah. Everybody was reporting fees in different ways, very hard to compare and to even understand what you were being charged. Returns were all being compared to different benchmarks. There were all sorts of... And so comparability was really difficult. So we need some and so luckily the legislation changed, guidelines changed, disclosure changed, all of a sudden we've got a new data set. Now every time that happens, um, on Sorted, we're able to uh, build comparison engines that really helps people wade through all that data and actually compare right. like for like, give a proper context. Like context is king, right? Mm -hmm. When you th when you think about it. If I, if I said to you or if you say to one of your clients, hey, these fees are 1%. 
They're like, well, one percent doesn't sound like very high. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that Correct. they have no they have no That's way right. of, no way of telling. If I tell you that you know returns are three percent. Is that good? Is that bad? You really, you really need the context. The data gives us the context. Right. So, so we built uh, two comparison engines. We started in November 2013 with the KiwiSaver Fund Finder. It's still online today. It really, right. it's a machine that really helps um, answers the question. Uh, how do you pick a KiwiSaver fund? And it's a fantastic resource, yeah. right? Uh, so that's so. fundfinder.govt.nz or no, fundfinder.sorted.org.nz. Uh, fundfinder okay. So basically, it's a subdomain of sorted.org.nz. Which is the the flagship, so you can actually come into the main website and find it that way and all yep. that. And then just recently, February uh, uh, this uh, this past year, two thousand nineteen, we uh, um, we came out with Smart Investor, which right, is yeah. which is this huge platform. Again, it's leveraging uh, a lot of the data, and we're expanding from KiwiSaver into the managed funds area, as well as share and bond offers uh, as well in, in New Zealand, going for that uh, comparability. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pretty much the experience is very similar in the sense that you look at one data piece and then you compare it to an average right away. So if you're looking at a growth fund, you look at the returns in the past five years, you're able to see for the average growth fund what the same return has been. And so very quickly, that comparison, gotcha. you can see where something is above its peers or below its peers. And so is it based on an external benchmark and, and if so where do the no it's not so it's just basically no. lining them no, all up so that's internal other. so if you look okay. at all the growth funds all the uh, kiwi saver growth funds there are in the market and you see how they've returned over the past five years yeah. you can basically see that some are above at, uh, above the average above their peers and some are, are sure. tracking below sure. now the important thing there is besides seeing how the results were because this is all about results um, yeah is to see whether um, returns have been consistently subpar, you know, under their peers, because that could be a sign of bad management, bad, uh, not very good results. So those you want to, but obviously you Got cannot it. make uh, decisions about your future based on what's happened in, in the past. We just don't know how Got these it. funds are going to go. Yeah, and I, like there's, there's so much there that you, you've, you've kind of covered, um, but... I guess knowing what the return is after fees is obviously the most relevant bet, you know, in terms of comparing one to the yeah. other. So that that's yeah. a significant change in how things are being reported. That that totally helps. Now, as yeah. all these KiwiSaver providers are moving into providing, I guess, naked KiwiSaver. I don't know if that's the way to call it, or KiwiSaver that, or the funds that are in Kiwi, KiwiSaver without the KiwiSaver framework. Yeah. Then. I guess you're piggybacking off of the same comparison metrics that you'd use, yeah. right? Yeah, same sort of thing. So if you're in that managed funds area, yeah. um, you know, Smart Investor, it, it's uh, and you'll see it from the, the clip that we'll, we'll show here. Smart Investor is a great new tool that we have on Sorted on the Sorted website. And what it allows you to do is do uh, comparisons of things like KiwiSaver, of managed funds, shares, and bond offers. What you get is this independent, impartial tool that does, is not there to sell you anything, it's there to inform you so that you can make more informed decisions about your investing in KiwiSaver, for example. More of us are investors than have ever been before, and that's particularly because of KiwiSaver. And so tools like this are really important to, for you to unpack what's inside your KiwiSaver fund and what your money is being used to invest in. See, for example, if your fund is investing in weapons, cigarettes, companies you like, companies you don't like. The key thing about Smart Investor is it allows you to see your fund in its context with all the other funds of the same type, so that you're comparing apples with apples and not, for example, apples with pineapples or something else that's quite different. When you're ready to invest beyond KiwiSaver, you're already in the tool where you can start to compare managed funds that are not KiwiSaver funds and then share and bond offers as well. And then you can be more informed as you make a decision of whether it's right for you and whether it'll help you reach the goals that you're after. With Smart Investor, for example, you could actually look at investment offers that are of a specific industry. Uh, say tourism or something like that, and just drill down into those offers that have to do with that industry. So Smart Investor is a great new tool on Sorted for all New Zealanders, and it really gives you a, a transparent, accessible view of many of the investment offers that there are out there. Uh, you can get to it through the Sorted website, and again, it's free. You don't have to put in any personal information at all, um, and it's there for all to use. Okay, so that's awesome. So, Tom, I often wonder, you know, when I'm investing into a fund, 
where does that money go? Like if I could just track those little dollars, you know, and see where they're going, see where they're actually landing. And, and that would be really cool to see that level of visibility. And I know that you've kind of, you're, you're building or you have built that to some degree, right? Is that Yeah, right? yeah. So that's, that in essence, is one of the really new things about Smart Investor. And why I'm really glad that we were able to do this is because yeah. for the first time, you're actually able to go into a given fund, you know, search up your KiwiSaver fund. Yeah. You're able to download a, a spreadsheet of everything that fund holds. And right. so, for example, for people who are interested in responsible investing, in ethical investing, Perfect. for the first time, they're actually, we used to be able to, on, like on the fund finder, we were able to just see the top 10. But now you can actually see the entire portfolio and see what you're, is that what right? you're going into. Yep, really? First time. So if you if you were um, if you were investing into a low cost QVC provider, which effectively was just going into a fund offshore, um, I guess the the visibility might get harder and harder depending on how yeah, many times that, it passes that through. Yeah, that one right? you'd have to un unpack and you'd have sure. to look at say uh, a Vanguard or something like that exactly. and see what what's being held uh, in, in one of those. But at least you'd be able to see in your KiwiSaver fund it's primarily in yes. an index fund. That's cool. Yeah. And one of the other things that I came across not too long ago when I was going through the um, the sign up procedure for Invest Now, and we had Mike Heath from Invest Now on the show. Uh, yeah, great. A couple weeks ago, I guess. About mm -hmm. three four weeks ago. And um, on, on their sign-up process, they directed people to a tool that you guys put out yeah. to help figure out what kind of investor you are, yeah. which I think is quite cool. So you want to just tell me a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that was actually one of the first tools I worked on when I started uh, at the commission. It's been really, really good. So essentially what we want in terms of when when we're working on investor capability is them to get more goal oriented and more strategic okay. on how they uh, how they get there and so part of that is just self knowledge like okay. like you know what kind of investor are are you what's your profile What's your uh, risk level that's Correct. appropriate for you? So we built something called the KiwiSaver, um, the Investor Kickstarter, Correct. is what it's called. And basically, it's 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 still a little bit uh, blunt, but it takes us through nine questions that are really about your capacity to invest, your time horizon, and uh, about your tolerance for risk. You know, it's still one of the better ways we have of gauging that. And and. You know, we come up with five different investor types, and we and we basically show um, you know what a typical asset allocation will be for each of mm. those. Um, and then we give some ideas. We even had the the actuaries give some projections about, hey, for the that given asset allocation, what can we expect to see? Okay. So try those are those are fairly conservative too. We're not trying to pump it up. You know, uh, that's the yeah. the danger when you see certain um, you know advertising. It, it, it's trying to funnel you into a given product. Uh, projections going forward might be way optimistic right. and and we see that sometimes uh, uh, across the market yeah. here we've gotten the experts to say well you know if you're investing as a growth investor you know this is what you can really Got expect it. and after fees and inflation as well so you Perfect. really get um, you Got know it. we're trying to give people the idea the best idea of what they'll receive in the hand what Got what it. are the real results Got that it. they can expect I, th I think that's really cool because I th with a lot of this sort of stuff it increases visibility and it's like looking through a glass a lot clearer to see what the options are. Yeah. Um, but unless you kind of flip that paradigm on its head and view it as a bit of a mirror that sometimes it's about knowing who you are a little bit before you interact with it, you kind of need to see in both directions, don't you? Yeah. And that's that's what I really like about that. Is And I, I'd like to see even more of that so that everyday Kiwis could know themselves better and how they may respond, yeah. especially to market conditions. Because until it happens, they yeah. might not really know. Yeah, that's the difficult know. part about gauging, um, you know, someone's risk tolerance is mm. that everybody has an appetite for risk on the way up. Mm -hmm. As soon as things start falling, uh, you know, they go up like an escalator, come down like an elevator, and on the elevator, right. everybody is or uh, the elevator shaft. Run, run, yep, yeah. exactly, running for the door. Um, yeah, uh, sort of thing. So, so it's not an easy thing to do, but really the goal there is to get uh, people thinking strategically, so that they're not just running for you know, a share fund without knowing how much of their portfolio really Correct. should be in shares. What's the what's the investment mix? And on Smart Investor, it is really a high emphasis on mix on, on each of those funds. What is the mix that's inside of it? Is okay. it appropriate for you? So you match up where you are as an investor with the product, and you and Good. you bridge that. That's cool. Uh, that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about scams because people are getting smarter. I know if you're investing and trying to grow wealth. You're going to be trying to make the, you're going to try and make the very best decisions that you possibly can. But one of the risks that are always there yeah. on the periphery is yeah. what happens if someone screws me? What happens if I get scammed? 
and you guys are on the, the cutting edge of, of this and, and tell me what you guys do in that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's both my privilege and uh, it, it, it's unfortunate in the sense that this job is needed at all, but basically I, uh, I manage a couple of fraud investigators and uh, their job is to work uh, different cases of an investment scam is one of yeah. those categories that we see there are others romance scams they morph into each other they become really? different things so yeah okay. many different um situations okay. yeah but to yeah. give you an idea the environment that we're in is very much a wild west environment on the internet i mean uh, you know your uh, uh, your audience will already know this but you'd be they may not have seen uh, the extent that we have so right. let me give you an example i mean uh, you know the idea of a fake website nothing nothing new um, the idea of your bank's website getting faked, possibly new, and you know we see new websites going on posing a, a, as a bank website, and then see that they were created last week. Or something wow, is like that, that right? Yeah, yeah, and if you look at the domain and things like that, and people don't always um, don't always get this. But here's here's the the main one where you get an idea of how wild this environment is. Is that I've seen entire government authorities faked in order to legitimize an investment scam. Is that right? Kind so, of like the IRD, for example. Yeah, yeah. so imagine that a, an entire entity has been created just to prove that an investment is in fact legit when it's not. Right. So, um, you know, and that happened uh, last year. So you're trying to do your due diligence, right? Yeah. And I'm sure you advise people to do this. They're doing the research, they hear about, maybe they get cold calls, maybe it's someone uh, who they've become a friend of or they think they've got an inside, you know, there's that scarcity thing. Hey, this is an right. exclusive deal to you. Don't tell anybody about it, but if you invest this way, you know. Yeah. So they start, you know, you know people are smarter they start to do their research. But when they do their due diligence, they might go looking and find this one government authority that says it's legit nice. and the okay. whole thing has been faked. Right, is that right? The entire- You give me a great idea for a fantastic scam, by the way, Tom. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, <laughs> I'm probably upskilling you in how to rip people, no, no you better no. not. <laughs> Man, I, uh, <laughs> or somebody in our, no, I'm just kidding, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's an unfortunate uh, yeah. fact of life that it is still very much a, an yeah. unregulated environment But I guess that, that, that does, though, illustrate the point, though, that if you can imagine something incredibly devious, if you understand how a little bit of this technology works, yeah. you could also bridge that gap and say, well, somebody else can probably think about that. And then when you're doing your due diligence, have that lens on, right? Yeah. As like an yeah. easy, not an easy way to catch them all, but mm -hmm. as one way, you almost have to put this deviousness sort of filter on, don't you? Well, yeah, the, the best thing I've heard is, is really trust and verify, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you, uh, you know, check to see if, if something's real. And one of the best ways is, if you get cold called, even yeah. if it's from a, a brand that you trust, best thing yeah. is just hang up, do not engage, make your own call to that organization and right. see if that's, if that's for real. Of course. Yeah, um, it, it's, there are a lot of um, social engineering and psychological tactics that are being used against us. Sure. And it's not some guy with a, you know, a hoodie and a laptop anymore. We're talking about organized crime rings, you know, and, and if you think about Wolf of Wall Street type of yeah. um, where you've got a pump and dump situation where they pump up the value of things. Well, these scam operations work in the sa in the same way. Right. And so it's really not fair. You know, you've got you've got um, uh, unsuspecting people on one hand, but even sharp people on the other hand. We're talking about business owners. We're talking. Uh, and we see people routinely. Yeah lose hundreds of thousands of dollars and right. many times into the millions. Is that right? Yeah. And they don't really talk, like, no, no one's going to talk about that, right? Because they, they feel probably quite embarrassed and shameful, yeah, right? That's right. But yeah. it happens and it's just like everything else. The, the more you talk about it, probably the better it is. But Yeah, so the reported that... number last year was that New Zealanders lost $33 million uh, dollars to, uh, right. to scams, right? And we know that that number is just the tip of the iceberg. Is that right? Yeah, because people do not report it. They're embarrassed or the money's already lost. They have figured what's the point yeah. you know and obviously we need people to report it so that we can you know yes. upskill everybody on what's going on and how we're all being okay conned that's great crazy crazy you know it's a short one today but i really appreciate your time coming on the show today tom thank you thanks for coming on hopefully uh, catch you on the next episode soon yeah great thanks cheers